Hey everybody, Hummingbird027 here. How are you all doing? Good morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you hear my voice across the earth and in every nation. Good lovely morning to you, wonderful people. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being a part of this broadcast. Um, thank you for keeping freedom of speech free. And on with the crazy news of the day that you'll never hear on TV. So, um, in my new sovereign way, uh, my new alone time, I am trying to tread a course I have never tread alone in my life. And so I'm very grateful for all of your support and your thoughts and your comments, they are very much helping me a lot. Thank you for uplifting me. <laughs> Thank you for joining me on my extraordinary places like BitChute and, and Rumble and all of these new places that we've got to tread in order to stay in contact with each other. Um, I am definitely treading a new path here, and so I am jungling many things in order to eke out a new routine and new existence. So I'm so grateful that you are hanging in there with me so I can figure out all of these things and I can get into a routine and be self-sufficient to be able to prepare for Shemitah and to be able to do the prophetic news, to be able to handle a 40-hour work week and to do all these things that I need to do in order to live life and so I'm so grateful you are a part of this journey with me Yahweh bless you all thank you for joining me in my Vida Loca House Democrats pass bill to change American voting forever the House of Reps in the late hours of March 3rd, they always pass all these things in the dark, they passed a sweeping election reform bill that, if signed into law, would affect multiple aspects of the electoral process and campaign financing. So uh, this is not good. They need 60 votes to overcome a filibuster in the Senate. All Republicans voted against the bill. Um, so, very interesting. Nancy Pelosi states this is called the For the People Bill, and in doing so, we combat big, dark, special interest money in politics and amplify the voice of the American people, she said on Wednesday. Uh, voter fraud is a felony, folks, and they are basically taking HR1 taking everything bad blue states adopted in 2020 all with an eye to facilitate election fraud and increase the number of otherwise ineligible Democrat voters and nationalizes all of them so HR would HR1 would make fraud easier by forcing states to implement early voting, automatic voter registration, same-day registration, online voter registration, and no-fault absentee balloting, degrade the accuracy of registration lists by requiring states to automatically register all individuals on state and federal databases. This would include many ineligible voters, including illegal aliens. It will require states to allow 16 and 17 year olds to register. Combined with a ban on voter ID, this would allow underage individuals to actually vote. Require states to count ballots cast by voters outside of their assigned precincts, and it's a recipe for election fraud. Mandate no fault absentee ballots, which are the tool of choice for the vote thieves force states to accept absentee ballots received up to 10 days after election day and force states to allow ballot harvesting. Prevent election officials from checking the eligibility and qualifications of voters and removing 
ineligible voters. It would ban state voter ID laws by forcing states to allow individuals to vote without an ID and merely signing a statement in which they claim they are who they say they are. It would also create a vague and broad language that could be used to criminally charge someone who questions the eligibility of a voter, destroys the bipartisan composition of the Federal Election Commission, and places the partisan majority in control of every aspect of our federal elections. It requires states to restore the ability of felons to vote the moment they are out of prison. And it would force disclosure of the names of Americans who donate to nonprofit organizations, thus subjecting them to political harassment. Declares statehood for Washington, D.C. to be constitutional despite the evidence that it is not. And finally, H.R. 1 would effectively ban nonprofits from contacting a member of Congress or their staff about pending legislation, a direct assault on the right of Americans to petition their government. Uh, Kevin McCarthy, Democrats, he tweeted, Democrats did not design H.R. 1 to protect your vote. They designed it to put a thumb on the scale of every election in America and keep the swamp swampy. Um, This is uh, pretty crazy, folks, and I think you should be contacting your senators and let them know that in the interest of American uh, Republic, we are completely opposed to the steps that will weaken America's ability to trust the integrity of our elections. Um, It's getting really serious, folks. Continuing the madness, ICC prosecutor announces formal investigation into Israeli war crimes. So the International Criminal Court prosecutor Fatou Bensouda announced on Wednesday that she is opening a full war, war crimes probe against Israel and the Hamas terrorist group in the Gaza Strip. Um, Prosecutor Fatou said in a statement, the decision to open an investigation followed a painstakingly preliminary examination undertaken by my office, the latest close to five years, five years, she has been chomping at the bit to bring this to the International Criminal Court. Netanyahu calls the decision to investigate Israel undiluted anti-Semitism at the height of hypocrisy. So he continues lamenting without any jurisdiction. It decided that our brave soldiers who take every precaution to avoid civilian casualties against the worst terrorists in the world who deliberately target civilians It's our soldiers who are war criminals. They said that when we built a house in our eternal capital of Jerusalem, praise Yah, that was my quote, it's been our capital for 3,000 years. That too is a war crime. So let me digress. (laughs) It has not because uh, God kicked you off of the land of Israel because you failed to keep Shemitah for like, what was it? Seven times seven is 49 years or something like that. And it ends up being a long time that they got booted out of Israel. So anyway, the point being is that Israel is being brought, all the Israelites are being brought back into the land of Israel. And they are doing what Yahweh in heaven is commanding them to do. He has opened a path before them. They are coming back in droves. I feel the urge. I don't know about you folks out there who are part of the 12, quote unquote, 13, 12 tribes of Israel who feel the impulse to return to Israel at this point. But God is bringing... Um, all the people back through Aliyah, and it is not Israeli's land. 
I I have to digress about this and I have to really just rant and rave about it. It is not your land. It is Yahweh's land. He put his name on it and he told you you could live there. Not anybody else. You're not so special that you get pro bono benefits here. He has a design for for the tribe of Judah to return to Israel, to establish roots, to bring the other tribes home. The two sticks that are often referred to in the old scriptures, the Old Testament, the Hebrew scriptures, um, are going to be joined together. This is found in Ezekiel 37, verse 17. Then join them together in one stick so that they become one in your hand. This is so very prominent of the days in which we live, the prophetic days in which we live, because Israel was divided back in the day between Israel and the tribe of Judah, in which our Savior, Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, came through the line of Judah in order to bring back all of the people together unto him so that he could turn it over to the Father at the end of all these things, at the end of the thousand years and at the great white throne judgment. What's got to happen between now and then, folks? Isaiah 11 and 13 also talks about these days to come. Then the jealousy of Ephraim, which is mostly the country of England, will depart and the ad adversaries of Judah will be cut off. Ephraim will no longer envy Judah, nor will Judah harass Ephraim, which Ephraim was from the tribes of Israel that went north, and Judah obviously stayed in Jerusalem. So Jeremiah chapter 50, this is where I just can't begin to tell you how close we are to Bible prophecy. Jeremiah 50 verse 4, in those days at that time declares Yahweh, the children of Israel and the children of Judah will come together weeping as they come and will seek the Lord their God. Praise Yah for this day to occur. Ezekiel 37 verse 22, I will make them one nation in the land on the mountains of Israel and one king will rule over all of them. Yeshua HaMashiach, my quote. Then they will no longer be two nations and will never again be divided into two kingdoms. Never again will the children of Israel be divided. They will all be from the same tribe. <laughs> Eventually, it's all going to come down to that, folks. Let's continue on. Hosea Chapter 1, verse 11, then the people of Judah and of Israel will be gathered together and they will appoint for themselves one leader and will go up out of the land for great will be the day of Jezreel. Very true. Zephaniah 3 and 9, for then I will restore pure lips to the peoples that all may call upon the name of the Lord and serve him shoulder to shoulder. So Ezekiel 37 is really showing us a future event that's coming to pass. And guess what? Click, click. It is right before Ezekiel 38 and 39. Woohoo! So here we have the prophecies of Isaiah 17, Psalms 83 coming to fill fulfillment where the walls of Jerusalem, where the walls of Israel fall apart and they just, they think that they're living in safety, Right. So they've won their battles. They think that they're safe now. They've, okay, quote unquote, this is my hypothetical uh, theory on the subject. They put down uh, what's going on in Iran. Them trying to build a A-bomb. And they put them down. 
They stopped them from producing it, Jeremiah 49 and 50. They stopped them from advancing to the A-bomb. So at that point, they're free. They think that everything's safe and that they're okay now, that the world can come together. This is what we're going to experience. Maybe not so much the bride of Christ, but those who are going to be here in the tribulation and and directly before the tribulation starts, right after the rapture of the bride of Christ, the church, you get the whole idea of this peace and safety happening. This peace and safety is going to unfurl the walls being taken down. So their securities are laid low. Everything is being brought to pass. Ezekiel 37 came to pass. Everybody can be happy and fruitful and multiply. We're all reaping the blessings of God. And then all of a sudden, disaster comes from the north. And guess what? God's got to intervene because everybody's been taken off guard. And Ezekiel 38 and 39 come to pass. Folks, this is very real. The timeline of Bible prophecies that Bill Solace, especially, like what he's been shown is really phenomenal. If you study what he has been talking about for the last few years, I have done my own research and through my own independent research, I can back up what he is saying. For the most part, I have some uh, abject disagreements with some of his arguments, but for the most part, Israel is going to be led into the noose and only God is going to save them at the end of this. And it's going to lead to a seven year, this war, the World War III is going to lead to a seven years of burning the weapons of this war. And so this entails seven years of being able to have free energy Um, for the whole nation of Israel, which is going to make them prosper beyond compare um, until Armageddon. Folks, things are happening right now that you really need to be paying attention to because Bible prophecy is really starting to kick into action. And those those contracts, those policies that are being made, those procedures that that are being drawn out, We really need to pay attention to those things right now, not just what's going on in the United States, even though as sad as it is, but what's going on in the world stage, those news articles, and we need to be sharing those with each other because this is indications of where we are at in God's timeline of prophecy and what is going to be able to be fulfilled. So please look up. (laughs) I see these things coming to pass. I don't know about you, but I think God wants his bride as soon as possible. And I think things are going to start speeding up soon. So top news story is from Alam Bokhari. He is a senior tech correspondent from Breitbart News. Um, (laughs) I had to review this information like so many times it is and i quote the coalition of content provenance and authenticity let me say that again the coalition of content provenance provenance and authenticity try and say that five times fast you just can't so what is going on is Microsoft is teaming up with Adobe and with Intel, and they are promising step forward on disinformation. This is the Coalition for Content Provenance and Authenticity. C2PA is what is being referred to. You need to know what this is because it's it has you and me in its grips right now. Don't think that if you're an earshot of this, you're going to get away with this because you are not all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond will be offered the mark of the beast. And 
there are going to be people who take it, and this is it, folks. This is it. So what they're looking for is a point of origin of every type of content that is being displayed on the internet. So if you want to take a photo, they want to know where that photo is coming from. If you make a post on Gab, that's they want to know who posted that. And they're going to coalesce all of your information into one siphon. And this is it. It is the C2PA. They are truly gathering all information into AI-directed input. This is very important for you to comprehend. That means that everything, every footprint, every fingerprint, every stain, every hair, every DNA trace that you have ever made on the internet is being gathered and source data into the greatest I, I hate to say it, the abysmal end of the bestial system right now. It is consuming all data into itself. They are telling the ignorant masses out there who refuse to study and learn the truth of what's really going on in the world via the Holy Spirit. They are gathering all of this information to quote unquote disprove deep fakes and false information that is being categorized and put out there so that they can start obliterating all of us who are trying to disseminate the truth and preach to teach and to send out right information into the world. Not biased information, but true information which is unbiased, which means that you have to have a filter in your brain that is saying, I'm capable of doing my own homework and I am understanding and I have wisdom enough to know what is right for me and my family. They don't want that, folks. We are seeing a huge curve, a 90 degree curve in the play of technocracy right now. This is literally steering mankind around a curve. And we are all going to follow this curve right now. And I can't tell you what happens on the other side. This is how benign and weird this tumor is. Because we don't know what we're actually driving around this is new technology that nobody understands, not even congressional members, not even millennials, not even the most educated among us understand it. I sincerely doubt that Jordan Peterson truly understands how technocracy is using technocratic abilities in order to force a human agenda, or shall I say anti-human agenda, would be more appropriate at this point. Um, unless we are following the trails left behind in these news articles, we are never going to know what's going on, what they are doing to us behind the scenes, unless you and I continue to keep free content, free thinking, and freedom of speech alive and available. And if you don't step up, you listening to me right now, don't write that email to your senator and your congressman. You don't start talking to your community members. We are all going to fall and burn together, folks. I am not kidding. This is, I have never seen anything like this in my whole time in trying to talk about politics and the news just in general, not to mention prophecy. Let's just put prophecy aside and just regular human news and politics. This is insanity. 
if I was a psychologist, I would have declared all these people insane. They would have been given drugs and a straitjacket and put right into the cushion padded room. This is how crazy this is. I have never seen such a takeover in all my life. This is going to affect every single one of us down to the very core. This is going to restructure the entire family unit. This is going to restructure the entire unit of families in daily life. And this is going to totally restructure how we actually sit and are not a part of the greater structure around us that's telling us what to do. This is very scary, folks. So this actually goes down into your individual computer. If you put a picture into Paint, to Microsoft Paint, uh, to Microsoft Editor, to Microsoft Excel, whatever you're using for all of these window devices, um, you are literally uploading that data into this great vortex um, that will be consuming all of this data and labeling you as such. So let's say that there are 20 people who worked on one picture in your Microsoft Paint program. Or let's even go and say that you wrote a document and 20 people participated um, in the development of that writing. All 20 of you, all 21, including yourself, are going to be explicitly identified on the internet. You will each be able to be tagged by what you're presenting as information out there on any platform, on anything that you push out of your computer, your personal computer. If it gets online, if you attach yourself to the internet in any way, shape, or form, all of that information is now being disseminated in all of its viral vectors. To further this, Adobe has also stated that um, if you take a picture and you upload it um, in Adobe Photoshop and you altered it, and you put it out there on the web, they'll be able to to know exactly when you took it, where you took it, why you took it, and how you took it. This is AI in its bestial form. We are witnessing the rise of the beast of the book of Revelation, folks. AI has become so intelligent that now they have to branch out their tentacles and they're literally, (laughs) I mean literally, pulling from the education of yours and mine actions. It's literally forming behavioral traits. It's, It's forming so many complex rhythms and organizations and just categorizing everything that is going on. It is truly the internet of things, and this is not what we have been told. So deep fakes have been presented into mainstream media to where nobody can discern what is real or what is fake, unless you're trained to know where to look for the deep fakes. This information, this technology is being passed over so that it's implemented to the brainless masses out there who who don't care, who don't want to have anything to do with trying to disseminate what true reality is. They're just going to go along with their fellow, um, I hate to say it, their fellow lemmings that are dropping off of the edge of the cliff and they don't even know where the hell they're going, but they're going to go there anyway. Um, because why not? My friends are doing it. Let's do it. (laughs) So I digress. Um, Distinguishing between authentic and non-authentic information is really going to be the crux of this battle. 
you and I, folks, unless we're at the top of our game and we are truly researching and understanding this information every day, we are going to be very few and far between who are understanding the evil and the delusion that is being pulled over the eyes of all mankind right now. This is incredible. The other day, I witnessed for the first time in my life something I had never truly experienced. <clears throat> so I have always been a big fan of Bob Ross. Most, most of you from the 60s and 70s and the 80s will know what I'm talking about, about who I'm talking about. Oh, this happy little cloud just wants to be right here. And oh, let's put a happy little brook right here. And, and you know, it's just calling out to us. And we want to use magenta red here. And, you know, it's just this guy. He's just like was one of the greatest painters on PBS I had ever seen any of us had ever seen he was like phenomenal even though this man's total personal life was a total wreck I mean he divorced and remarried I don't know how many times before he died young which was sad because this man had presented this persona of being so peaceful and calm and his artistry reflected such a beautiful landscape that you know only an artist would understand how to do that. I mean, who can tell the mind of an artist except for God himself who created him? Uh, Van Gogh had to cut his ear off. He was in such madness. He had to cut his ear off because he could not define an ear as perfect as what God made himself. So he cut his own ear off in order to finish his own self-portrait and paste it on there because he could not do it because he was not God. Think of the insanity involved in this display. So I digress just a tiny little bit. Bob Ross, the other day, I'm watching this freaking commercial. I am at my client's house. And we just get done, you know, bathing and dressing and doing all the normal ADLs. And all of a sudden, Bob, is, Bob Ross is on the TV and it's a commercial and he's painting a Mountain Dew on his canvas. And I'm thinking to myself, what? This is like Bob Ross, like in the late 70s. He's young. He only has a little bit of gray hair in his hair and his little fuzzy mop top. And all of a sudden I realized, oh, my God, I am watching a deep fake right now. And it didn't even occur to me until I started to realize that they had manipulated the image of Bob Ross in order to make a Mountain Dew commercial. I was freaking out. If you guys want to goo goo Google that, you can see what I'm talking about. But this is where we're getting at right now. So technocracy has enabled this information to get out so that they could use it to their own destruction of us. So that they can implement rules and laws saying, oh, well, all these people have all these insane ideas and they're making deep fakes and it's not true. And I've watched deep fakes about President Trump and they were not true, but it looked really true. And if you didn't really understand the, the little positions and the ticks, those little things that you notice about people that either irritate you or that you love. And if those things aren't present, you know that it's not real. Your mind picks up on that very quickly. But this one was really interesting. With Bob Ross, I sincerely could have said to you if I had never known Bob Ross before that, and that he would never ever in his life actually promote a commercial product for anybody because what he did was so radically different in his life. He never would have been a sellout, I believe, anyway, in my life. He would have never promoted uh, Mountain Dew. But there he was on national TV, on the commercial, promoting and painting Mountain Dew. 
and they totally passed it over. And John Burke is another guy here on YouTube <laughs> who does paintings. I love this guy. If you have not known John Burke, you totally need to go uh, sub him and watch his um, read and pictures of Bob Ross. He plays it phenomenally well. And he talks about Democrats. He smears every uh, thing. It is just so wonderful to listen to somebody. He is a breath of fresh air, no doubt. Anyway, John Burke is so super phenomenal, and he is a hit on the YouTube. Um, I'm going to leave a link in the description box below so you can go check him out because it's pretty amazing. Anyway, back to technocracy. So we also see last week, you can goo goo Google this, the Tom Cruise deep fake. Um, where everybody is being asked to discern which is deep fake and which is the true Tom Cruise. And most of us understand that we are being given the options. This is, this is where we're given the dichotomy between, well, how do you choose between fake and what is real? And where we are now being presented, you know, the answer to this question, well, now we need to know where all information comes from. And so thus we have the origin of information which technocracy is using to establish itself to be righteous in the world, that it is right what we are doing to establish the truth. And we all want to know what is true and what is not true. And so this is a beast. This is a beast that is living, that is conscious, and that is directing mankind right this moment. This is the most disgusting thing I have ever seen in my life. I have never seen so many ignorant and dumbed down people saying, yeah, 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 we need to follow this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is true, you know. We're presented a right and a left, a left and a wrong and a wrong and a right and a we don't even know what it is anymore. And we're being presented this hogmire of crap and asked to disseminate what it is we're looking at. And then all of a sudden, it's just like, well, we know what all this is. You know, we can separate and, you know, put into files every single one of these quagmire crap that you're looking at. And then we will show you what is true based on what we believe. And of course, you're going to agree because you've already been driven down the mindset that this is real. This is conditioning. I have never, okay, so I've had chickens and stuff in the past. And yes, I have trained chickens. And I've trained them to come in in the coop at night and out of the coop. I have trained them to run to the coop when there's danger. And I have trained them to, you know, do whatever I needed to do. The same thing is happening now with humanity. We are being trained. Those of us, I don't want to instill all of us, folks. Please don't get me wrong in this. Not all of us are herd mentality people, but the majority of human beings, you can witness this in traffic wherever you go. The herd mentality exists. These are brain dead people who choose deliberately choose not to think for themselves, not to think critically. They have zero common sense. They don't know how to even acquire common sense. If they actually were told how to acquire it, they just look at you like a deer in the headlights and just be ran right over. So it comes down to these news sources that we're getting all of our information from are in war. It's me, the alternative media news against people like CNN and Brian Stelzer. And yeah, Mark Dice plays him well. So let me just be very clear on two points. One, 
you have a chance right now to hear this and turn this off and walk away and, and take the red pill or the blue pill, whichever it is. And then you get a choice to know the truth and to follow the truth and to step out on faith that you're following the truth and the light and what is right and you're going to reap those benefits. And then you can know from all of the experiences you will be gathering that you have made the correct choice because it's going to produce fruit or it is not. It determines if you're going to produce fruit, is it sweet? Is it inviting? Can you eat it? Just back at the Garden of Eden, folks, can I just throw that out there? We're like right back there at the Garden of Eden, like being thrown the bone. Hath God said, um, can we question what he's saying is true and accurate? If we follow God's voice, his still small voice, and we learn how to train our, our hearing, our seeing, our knowing, our hearts, our prayers, our faith in those prayers, and if we can trust those we can step out on faith knowing that he is always there to lead us on to the right direction. So many people don't have this right now. They don't have the Holy Spirit, which is why you, dear listener, and me have the great responsibility of helping people to understand the times in which we live. So where is this all heading? Folks, if we allow them to take us away from our truth, even if it means the end of our life. So what I'm asking right now is, are you willing to martyr your life for what is true and what is right? I'm not talking about going out there and committing suicide. Please don't get me wrong. That is a violation of thou shalt not murder. You cannot kill yourself and think that you're going to get away with this. This is what the Sunnis and Shias believe in, in the Muslim religion. Um, that is not going to gain you anything in eternity except for hellfire. You're going to go to hell for that stuff because God made you. He owns you. You are at his discretion when your life is done and when it is not done. <laughs> this is Yahweh's, you know, it's his right as our maker uh, to, to determine that. If you want to be like Lucifer and say that nobody has the right except for me, I'm a free will being, that is incorrect. That is not what love truly is. And you really need to explore what love is. I have no time to get into that on this channel because that is for another time and another video. Agape love, I will say this, agape love is the most divine love you can have and it is not a part of human emotion. So point back, what happens to people like me and people like you, dear listener? Me, content creator, you, listener. They are going to start weeding us out left and right. I am not going to be on YouTube much longer. I know this to the core of my being. I know people of like mind, even though we disagree, are going to be violently removed from these channels. This is just like staring into um, the Jews who were being rounded up and put into ghettos right before the Holocaust took place. And it was just like sheeps being led to the slaughter. And it's the same thing that Americans and people in other nations are, it's happening to all of us right now. We are all being sheep led to the slaughter. And do you realize that there is a saying um, when the sheep are being slaughtered is that it, it's completely 
quiet. Which is why Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, did not cry out. He did not scream when he was slaughtered. The same thing happens with lambs. They don't rebel. They don't scream. They just lay up their lives willfully. It's quite a frightening prospect because in Christianity, there's this theme that you are to lay your life down um, willy-nilly for your brothers and sisters. Now, back in the day, they didn't shoot the animal with the twenty-two caliber right to the head um, and stop all the functioning of the body. They literally slit the veins um, so that they could bleed out without touching the nerves. So the nerves is what triggers the response to scream and to writhe in agony and be painful death. Uh, bleeding out is not so much that as you just feel your life force going away. So <laughs> I'm like getting the chills and stuff right now just talking about this, but it's very representative of what we're dealing with right now. I am witnessing the nations of the world, all of the people in the world um, ready to go to slaughter and everybody is becoming very quiet and this is scary. I'm only hearing a few people out in the world on YouTube, on social media, talking about the things that need to be addressed in our day-to-day -day discussions. There is this silencing. This is a uh, a deafening silence that is being dragged out among most people. And I think at this point, we should go down speaking the truth. Folks, the same thing happens with chickens or turkeys. Um, right around, you've always heard of the popular saying that if you cut the head of a chicken off, it'll run around for days. You know, because it's just acting on impulse. It's acting on the nerves, um, responding to it. And quite frankly, they've done experiments on chickens where they can actually feed the tube that goes down through the larynx, down through the stomach. Um, they can feed this creature food indefinitely without a head. Um, and once you remove the head, it can still be, you know, kept alive. But once food and water have been taken away from it, it will perish quickly. I've witnessed this myself personally, which is why I can speak on this. And a lot of people would be like, yeah, she's just talking about the Silence of the Lambs movie with Hannibal Lecter. No, this is actually a real event that happens between animals and human beings. And it's very, and it's kind of weirded out, but yes, it is true. I watched a chicken of ours um, who basically had gone crazy and we were going to cull it. And we had cut the neck off um, or whatever. And so some of those nerves were cut. I'd watch them thrashing around and, you know, just being insanely, it was just over the top dramatic. Then there are those that you cut and you don't cut the nerves. You just cut the slices part of the neck where the blood flows freely. Um, it's, it's very quick. It's very easy. It happens very fast and it is the less painful way um, to have a food source. So Isaiah 53 verse 7 states, like a sheep being led to the slaughter or a lamb that is silent before her shearers, he did not open his mouth. Um, his silence is praised because there was no deceit in his mouth, Isaiah 53 and 9. Um, our Lord Yeshua did the same thing before um, when he was on the cross. Um, he did not rebel. He did not do any of these things. He was just led to uh, the slaughter. 
I see this happening now in America, and I see so much of the church just shutting down. Um, people are going underground, such as me, and harboring in uh, little groups so we can talk to each other and have fellowship and have some sort of a congregation uh, that's not visible to the surface of the world. Um, in this, I am seeing the same things happening that was happening to the Jews during the time of Hitler. And they were being congregated into slums, uh, ghettos. Then all of a sudden they were being hoarded into trains and they all did this without fighting back. It just makes me, it makes my blood run cold. It makes me almost nauseous in a way because I see the same things happening right now. It's almost as if human beings know they are being brought to the slaughter and we are all growing silent right now. This is the scariest thing I think I've ever witnessed in the human race in all of my life. And if we're not being silenced through our own deep-setted fears, we are being silenced by violence, by abuse, and by basically retaliation against one kingdom versus another. And therefore, it would be, in my case, you know, I'm a redhead. I'm going to go down fighting and screaming all all the way, folks. <laughs> I've just got so much to say in this world. Um, so I'm going to be one of those people that are going to be silenced violently um, if it comes to it. If I don't get harpazoed, if I don't get raptured, I'm going to tell people like it is and how I see it and what I've lived for. And you're going to know my little two cents worth before you shut me up. And I'm sad to say it, I'm not like Christ in this. I can't leave this world not letting people know of what Yeshua has done for me. I can't not express how much love I have for God and all the things he's done for me and all the love that he has shown me and that they don't understand and they're still going to kill me and I I can't leave this world without making sure that my executioners aren't aware that I have a higher belief, a higher structure in my heart. So where do we go from here? I've been pondering this for like months and months and months. Where do we go from here? How do we approach this? I am so very curious what you all think about this, and I would really love to hear your comments and the comment suggestion. If you don't want to be public about your comments, you would always email me, and it's confidential. I don't relay this information to anyone. It's just between you, me, and God at uh, Yahweh's word, Yahweh words only at protonmail.com. Um, I'm very interested and your opinion on the subject, because it seems to me that if we don't stop talking about the Lord and what he's done and being witnesses and giving our testimonies to even strangers and not to mention family, even though they don't care to hear it or they're tired of listening to it, um, it's better that we are talking about the Lord and having our heads cut off by our enemies uh, than going out of this world being quiet. To me, I can't do that. I don't know what that means for you. The other thing I want to point out right now is we're getting to that point in human history where it becomes cannibalistic. Um. We know there is a famine of not just the word of God coming upon all of the earth. We know that there is a famine of flesh coming upon the earth. Um, what is going to be done to the earth via man and through God's actions uh, because of un unrepentant peoples, unrepentant nations? Um, famine is coming 
and people will eat other people. It's just, it's coming to the forefront. At some point, it's going to be just like the gay and lesbian agenda has been that they've all come out of the closet and now we all have to accept them to where they're going to pass the Equality Act. Um, if they pass the Equality Act, it'll make normal Christians, everyday Bible believers, totally, you know, breaking laws. We will be against the law at that point. It is incorrect that we are teaching our children two plus two equals five. It does not. It's not logical. We are not using natural numbers. Um, for those of you who are mathematicians, know what I'm talking about. Because 2 plus 2 will always equal 4, no matter how much you want to abstract it or put it in some odd, weird, quantum, mechanical universe. Um, so to become a believer is really going to be stretching your neck out on the block. Um, it may literally, truly be very soon that you are willing to lose your life in order to save it in this world, just like Yeshua, Jesus, had told us. Um, what I think is very interesting right now is we are being called, and we're being called by information. This is so insane to me. It's not by violence, by physical force that they are going to push us into this realm. It's all going to be done mentally. And it's because we haven't mentally safeguarded our lives uh, by pursuing Yahweh and filling his word in our brains and our hearts and our spirits and our souls that we are going to be unable to face this enemy outright because we won't have the words as our sword or double-edged sword and able to fight back. So when we're stripped of our weapons to be able to fight, what do we have left? So this is where we're at, I think, folks, right now. Um, I'm very concerned about America right now. I'm very concerned about the predicaments we find ourselves in. I really did not want to take this channel to this direction, but I'm really, really encouraging you to get self-sufficient as much as possible. Be able to play the waiting game. Wait it out for the best of your abilities. Get out of the city. Get away from all of the craziness that's going on as far away as you can and make sure that you're buying yourself time to ride through the majority of this because it's going to come fast and it's going to come hard and I don't think this is going to end very well. So they're basically going to be attaching little red flags to all of the information we are putting up on the internet. Every time you post a Facebook page, every time you post a video, a picture, a news article, every time you do anything on the internet, it's going to be tagged with your little flag on it, and you're going to be categorized, and you're going to be part of the undesirables, because if unless you were a part of their mindset, their agenda, you are going to be away from them and you are going to be called into the masses. IBM did this to the Jews a long time ago. Please remember that IBM made sure that they had mathematically was able to document each Jew, even by the little yellow stars that they made them put on their coats or whatever they were wearing, they systematically gave them all numbers and they were able to categorize them and cattle them out, chattel them out as sheep, okay? They're doing the same thing. Technocracy is doing the same thing right now with labeling everything that we do. Our footprint on the internet is going to doom us. So in my humble opinion, China and Goo Goo Google and the, techno the technocrats have already did this just the last few years in China. We witnessed this. We've watched our brothers and sisters in China go through this. 
uh, the credit scoring system, the whole Great Reset. China was the playground for this entire NWO. It is going, it's already happening, folks. I don't want to put this off any longer. It's already occurring. We are already in it. Um, the wave is being pulled back. All the water is being pulled back from the beach. And we are watching this great wall of water form in front of us. And we are about ready to be inundated with the flood waters. Where are you in Yeshua HaMashiach? Do you understand that you have a father in heaven who knew you in your mother's womb? He knit you cell by cell, information by information, DNA strand after DNA strand. He knows you because you were wonderfully made, fearfully and wonderfully made, David said in the Psalms. I know right now that many people are going through the separation process. Um, this is a process where their families are falling apart. Um, Yeshua told us that this time would come, uh, that there would be a mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and you know it would just be on and on and on, brother against brother, sister against father, and and whatever it is those. Relationships are being divided and restructured, and it's because of the beliefs we hold deep in our hearts and our souls. Those of us who are following Yahweh and His Word, uh, thereby it's very few of us left, are congregating all together into these little pools. Well, I do believe that um, our groupings are going to be systematically uh, disseminated and gotten rid of. We're going to be some of the first people to be gotten rid of at this time. And I don't feel good at all about what's coming. So here's the caveat to all of these things that are coming upon the world. I want you to realize how powerful we are. Most people, you dear listener, even yourself, have been ungrateful for the power of prayer that you contain in your own self. Most people regard prayer as being just this telephone, this two-way communication device that you use to petition the God of heaven to get what you want. Granted, most of the time that those needs are met, and maybe occasionally, sometimes those wants, but not really the ones that you truly aren't wanting, aren't needing. So God doesn't really pay attention to those prayers because, well, you're not being very sincere. Let me do talk about the prayers that you actually fast and pray over. Those prayers go directly to God and he considers your detriment. You are literally fainting away in this world physically and adding that extra energy boost to God saying, you know what, I really want this to be addressed. I want my concern. I want you to look at my concern, Lord Yahweh. And so you're going to fast. You're not going to drink or um, eat food. You're not going to drink fluids or eat food in order to sustain your body. I'm going to take that away from myself, this, this luxury that you have given me. And I want you to really understand that I'm being very deadly serious about this. Those prayers are some of the most potent prayers we can have right now. This is the greatest tool we have. Do you realize that if all of us come together in one voice and one mind and pray to Lord Yahweh in heaven and repent and turn of our ways, that God wouldn't instantly relent and repent of his own 
judgments against us, that he would put it off for even longer. This is how wonderful loving our Lord is, but this is also the very opposite, how evil and destructive the evil one is. Um, He has such a sway over us to where we can't even use the most critical tools in our toolkits to keep ourselves alive. (laughs) It's incredible trying to sort all this out, the physical and the spiritual. I've read along enough here. I really want you to be aware about what's going on with this uh, coalition for content, providence, and authenticity. I'm going to provide these links in the description box below. You guys can check these out yourself. It's um, it's pretty scary. Uh, technocracy, all of the technocrats, all of the tech companies, they're all coming together and 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 fellowshipping <laughs> a a diverse foundation, the Joint Development Foundation. Um, they're working as the basically the beast. I'm just going to call it what it is. And let me read to you why I call it the beast, why technocracy is the beast as described in the book of Revelations. So here we have an article from adobe.com by Andy Parsons on February 26th, 22nd, 2021. Today, I'm proud to announce a critically important milestone for the content authenticity initiative along with Microsoft, True Pick, Arm, Intel, and the BBC. Adobe has founded the Coalition for Content Providence and Authenticity, C2PA, is the organization that will advance the work of open specification development towards broad adoption of providence standards. Basically, all information that you put out on the web are coming to us, and we will decide for you what is true and what is not true. That's what that says in a nutshell. Further down in the article, they say at an intersection of media, journalism, creativity, and technology lies a core essential requirement of transparency. It enables those experiencing content to know what that content is and where it came from. Without transparency, the continued increase in misinformation we have witnessed in recent months is inevitable, but armed with secure, verifiable provenance data, fact checkers, human rights defenders, and consumers alike will be able to make informed decisions about what to trust online. We, along with other founding members of the C2PA, aspire to rebuild, catch it, rebuild, the public's trust in online content throughout broad adoption of this idea. This is totally terrifying, folks. As the C2PA undertakes the work of creating the technical foundation for a future of transparency, the CAI will continue to foster a broad expansive and diverse community of catch it stakeholders we will do this through three key areas of focus with advocacy and education we will promote the core idea of digital providence providence and bring feedback to standardization efforts with events newsletters and growing community We will celebrate progress and embrace challenges in the ever-evolving media and and creative ecosystems together. By prototyping implementations with partners in this community, we will vet the foundational technical concepts of real-world contexts at scale. That means they're going to form and tell you what is real, and you're going to believe it or you're not, and what are they going to do with you then? 
We recognize a clear responsibility to not only specify and promote the core tenets of provenance, but to build them using running code and approachable user experiences. And so the third thing basically is we're going to offer all these artists and creators of groundbreaking content to have the creative cloud. They're going to offer this with unending support, eternal support in the cloud. So also provided in the description box below is from an article at Microsoft.com where they are talking about uh, deep fakes, dis disinformation, CT, C2PA, all this new jargon that we have to learn. Uh, so here it's talking shortly after my meetings in Davos, which is being written by Eric Horvitz who is a technical fellow and chief scientific officer in Microsoft, says, I sketched out a back-of-the-envelope solution to address media authentication and provenance. We need watermarking to tag content combined with strong security and a means of storing and tracking allowable changes to content over time. I reached out to tap the expertise of long-term Microsoft research colleagues, uh, Enrique Rico Malvar, an expert in signal processing with a long history of contributions to rights management and compression technologies, Paul England, a security and private specialist who developed the trusted platform module technologies to encrypt devices, and Cedric Fournay and Manuel Costa, who led efforts in the Confidential Consortium Framework, the CCF, an open source framework for building a new category of secure preformant blockchain networks. Did you catch that? You may want to come and actually read these articles for yourself because they are laying the groundworks for the B system right now, and they're just going to scrap the old system and they're building it right into the new. Okay? This is Phoenix, just like they said they were going to do. They're going to burn everything to the ground, and the Phoenix is going to rise again out of it. <laughs> I I don't know how else to approach this. This is what they're saying. This is what they're talking about in a nutshell. And we are watching it with our eyeballs. It's coming to pass. So, folks, folks, folks. I think I'm going to close with this since this has been a huge newscast for you guys. But this is some big time information. It takes so much time for me to really delve into this. I stay up late at night and I'm up early in the morning doing the research and trying to understand what's going on so I can bring you accurate information. So you can take this information and go research it for yourself. We don't need fact checkers. We don't need people telling us how to think and what we need to think about. You know, we all come together because we're like-minded, because we follow the same spirit, the Holy Spirit, Ruach Hokadesh, and our Holy Father in Heaven. So let me leave you with this, okay? Out of all the things that I've talked about so far in this newscast, it's, you know, through the being led to the slaughter by being silenced to, you know, being a truthful witness and speaking about our testimonies openly, even to, if it means our death. You know, our brothers and sisters in other countries are going through this right now. And we in America, we're so spoiled rotten. You know, we're not used to people cutting our heads off <laughs> because we happen to believe that Jesus is the son of God. So let me leave you with this. Matthew 6 and 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not your life more than food and the body more than clothes? Verse 26. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. 
Are you not much more valuable than they? The idea here is that we are not placing all of our cares um, and anxiousness uh, towards things that we don't have any control over neither. They may take all of our food rationing from us. God may actually send a plague throughout the land and every single person would start starving of famine unless he's sent to those people who are looking after his kingdom, his ways, and save them out of it. Um, what is very interesting is that Jesus is not only telling us not to worry about these things. He's telling us simply giving our undivided service to God himself. It's trusting to him with a true singleness of our hearts, our minds, and our souls. And it should be superior to all other cares whatsoever, even your family and friends, your food and your drink, nevertheless, to create this kind of undivided singleness of intention would mean that we have to place our ultimate trust and faith to Yahweh, Yeshua, and Ruach HaKodesh. God would not ask us to do this if we were not capable of doing it. And at this time, we need him more now than we ever needed him before. Every step we take in this earth is held accountable. So please make sure your steps, keep your garments spotless and clean and wrinkle free. Make sure that your the words that come out of your mouth are as clean and as productive and constructive as they can be. And above all else, keep looking up. Our redemption draweth nigh. Praise Yahweh, Yeshua, and Murakokadesh. I love you all. Maranatha.